a burrito with potatoes and chorizo. We start um, by bringing a pot of uh, potatoes up to a boil. These are just little baby Yukon Gold or white potatoes. These potatoes have already cooked about six minutes and they're so thinly sliced, that's fine. Then we drain our potatoes and put them right back in the hot pot. We do that to evaporate the excess liquid from the potato. Let them dry out a little bit, okay? In a big old cast iron skillet, I've taken one pound of chorizo per four adult portions. And this is Mexican chorizo. And I've just browned it and crumbled it. To that, we're going to add one large or two medium onions and a poblano pepper. You can use any chili peppers you like. If you want it super spicy, you can throw in a couple jalapenos. And we're gonna let those guys cook down until they're nice and tender. And then taste it and see if it needs any salt and pepper at all. So much seasoning comes out of the sausage and their drippings, it might be fine kind of as is. When the onions start to soften, I deglaze the bottom of the pan by adding about a half a cup of water and just pick up all that flavor and make that chorizo pepper onion mix nice and uh, saucy. So I like to make a nice fresh pico de gallo. Pico de gallo is traditionally some sort of hot chili pepper, a onion, garlic, if you like garlic, and then you let it sit with acid, in this case, lime juice, and lots of salt and all the juices come out of your chilies and your onions. So you let this set a few minutes. I've already got the chilies here working. And I chose to use pickled jalapeno peppers in this. And instead of the traditional just diced red tomato, I'm going to use tomatillos. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin, smoky cumin, it smells like chili, it's delicious. And a little bit of black pepper to this as well. To that I also add fresh or dried oregano and a small handful of cilantro. Obviously, if you don't care for cilantro, don't use it. Use, <laughs> use, use flat leaf parsley, which pretty much everybody's down with, or just skip it. It's got plenty of flavor as is. Okay, so we have kind of assembly line ready to go here, and of course our cheese, pepper jack, shredded pepper jack. So now if you have a stove top that has a gas flame, you can char your tortillas right over the open flame. Just throw them on there. Let them go about 30, 45 seconds on each side. If you do not have a gas top stove, if you have induction or an electric top stove, what you wanna do is heat up a cast iron or a stainless steel skillet, and you just char it to get it nice and soft and to give it extra flavor. You take a little bit of potato, and then you want to sandwich the cheese between items that are hot. So we'll sandwich the cheese between the potatoes and the meat. Which apparently is so mesmerizing I cannot continue a conversation with you while I'm doing it. <laughs> and then on top of that, our pico de gallo. I know, I tend to overpile. <laughs> then it gets kind of messy because you got to tuck and roll at the same time. Okay, then we have a beautiful little papoose, little buddy. And what you do is make all of these, okay? Six or eight of them is what you'll yield probably from that, depending on how overstuffed and how big your tortilla is. Then spray a nonstick griddle and get it nice and hot. And once you get them all together, put them all on at the same time, you're gonna crisp them up. I'm just showing you by example here. But you wanna do it seam side down first so they don't open up, okay? Then if you have any leftover of the pico de gallo that you made, you pile that alongside. You know, put it in a little bowl on the table and people can pile some extra alongside. I also always put out extra of the pickled jalapenos, hot or mild. And always on the table, I put a squeeze bottle of Mexican crema or sour cream. Yes. And there you go.